Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and one of my favorite moments from Pokemon Origins, the mini-series chronicling Red's journey through the Kanto region, comes in the first episode right before he battles Brock. Brock asks Red how many badges he has, and when Red responds that he has none, Brock selects just two Pokemon to fight against Red with, despite Red using more. I love this scene because it explains a logically weird part of the main series games. Why do so many gym leaders, who are career trainers whose job it is to be good at Pokemon battles, so often have weak teams with very few Pokemon? Obviously, the actual answer is that the games would be impossibly hard otherwise, because you'd fight the first gym leader with level 50 Pokemon and that would be stupid. But this bit from Pokemon Origins provides us an in-universe logical explanation for why this happens. The gym leaders are seeing how many badges you, the player, has, and then deciding how tough of a team to use against you to make it fair. Now, obviously there are exceptions, like you can skip Brawly in Gen 3 Hoenn, and then if you go back and fight him later with seven badges, he still has the same team as he would if you only had one. But this is an in-universe explanation, not something that's 100% always true in the games themselves. I was thinking about what teams the various gym leaders would have if they were the final one that you battled. So you had seven gym badges, and they could use their best team. So in this video, I'm going to be giving every single main series gym leader a squad of six Pokemon that I think would make sense for them to use in an all out final gym leader battle. Although I probably should mention that very few final gym leaders actually use six Pokemon, but I think they should use six Pokemon, so I'm giving them six Pokemon anyways because that's more fun. Also, because the idea is that these are the final gym leaders, which is still before the league, and therefore still before you have the national Pokedex, I'm going to be limiting their team rosters to Pokemon that are available in their particular regional Pokedex. So, for example, Lieutenant Surge can have Magneton, but not Magnezone because Magnezone is not in the Kanto Regional Pokedex. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started with the Kanto Gym Leaders, beginning with, of course, Brock. His squad of six is pretty easy, the six fully evolved rock types of Kanto. Onyx, Golem, Omastar, Kabutops, Aerodactyl, and Rhydon. No Steelix and no Rhyperior because of what I said about limiting their teams to their regional Pokedexes. Also, something that's relevant for all of the Kanto Gym Leaders is that I'm making their teams as if you're fighting them in a Kanto playthrough, not in a post-game Johto playthrough. I think it would be confusing to give them teams for both, and I think it makes sense to focus on their Kanto-only teams since those were the games that they debuted in. One more thing I should mention that's true for all of the gym leaders is that I'll be trying to give them Pokemon that they've used somewhere before. I tend to prioritize Pokemon that they use in initial gym battles, but I can also take Pokemon from the Pokemon World Tournament or rematches, for example. Next is Misty. Her squad would be Starmie, Golduck, Lapras, Gyarados, Vaporeon, and Seeking. Starmie is obvious, Golduck and Lapras are from several places, Gyarados and Vaporeon are from her Let's Go rematch team, and Seeking she used in the Pokemon World Tournament. Next is Lieutenant Surge, whose team would be the fully evolved in Kanto electric types. Raichu, Electrode, Magneton, Electabuzz, and Jolteon. Well, obviously Zapdos is a fully evolved Electro-type in Kanto too, but we can't give him a legendary, so he needs a repeat. Since Lieutenant Surge has used two Electrodes on his team before in the Johto games, I think a second Electrode would make sense. Erica's team would be Vileplume, Parasect, Victory Bell, Executor, Tangela, and Venusaur, the six fully evolved grass types in the Kanto region. I don't really want to give her Venusaur because I prefer not to give gym leaders or elite four members starters if I can avoid it, but I would rather give her a starter than a repeat. So Venusaur, 
Erika gets to use. Next is Koga, and remember this is him as a gym leader, not as an Elite Four member later. So some of the Pokemon he used on his Elite Four teams are no longer fair game because they're not in the original 151. His team would be Weezing, Muck, Venomoth, Golbat, Tentacruel, and Arbok. The first five are all Pokemon that he's used as a gym leader at least once. And Arbok is there because it's a pure poison type that he's somehow never used. And by golly, I think he should use it. Arbok is a cool looking Pokemon. On the topic of Koga, that brings us to Janine. Janine is Koga's daughter who took over the Fuchsia City gym after Koga moved on to the Elite Four. Now, Janine is a special case compared to most other Kanto gym leaders because she's only ever appeared in Johto games. Okay, she's appeared in later games, Black 2 and White 2 specifically, but she's never been a Kanto gym leader in a Kanto only game, which means anytime she's been there, she's had access to Johto Pokemon and you would battle her in a game where Johto Pokemon are part of the regional Pokedex. Therefore, unlike most Kanto gym leaders, she can use Johto Pokemon. Her team would be Crobat, Weezing, Ariados, Venomoth, Tentacruel, and Nidoqueen. The first four are species she uses in initial battles, then Tentacruel and Nidoqueen are added because she used them in the Pokemon World Tournament. Next is Sabrina, and her team would be the fully evolved, non-legendary psychic type Pokemon of the Kanto region, excluding Starmie. Gym leaders can have duplicate Pokemon, that's fine, but I don't want a gym leader's strongest Pokemon to be used by any others. So since Starmie is Misty's ace, I don't want Sabrina using it. Her team is Alakazam, Mr. Mime, Hypno, Jinx, Slowbro, and Exeggutor. I know she's had Venomoth before, but I am not giving her Venomoth. It was so dumb that she ever had a Venomoth because there were so many other psychic types available. Blaine would have Arcanine, Rapidash, Ninetales, Magmar, Flareon, and Charizard. This is another situation like Erica. I don't want to give him a starter, but it's the only fully evolved fire type left, aside from Moltres, but obviously he's not getting Moltres. So he's got to have a Charizard or else have a repeat. Next is Giovanni, the final gym leader in a Kanto playthrough. So I guess technically his team is already acceptable, but like I said, I'm gonna give him a team of six because that's more fun. Oh, and also his teams are usually riddled with repeats. So I wanna make them all unique this time. His team would be Nidoking, Nidoqueen, Dugtrio, Rhydon, Sandslash, and Marowak. The first four are Pokemon he's used in gym battles before, while the latter two are ground types he's used in the Pokemon World Tournament. I am not giving him Persian. The only reason he has ever had a Persian is because of the freaking anime. And it's not a ground type. The final Kanto gym leader is Blue, who already has a team of six Pokemon. I think, I think he's the only final gym leader who actually has a full team of six. And you fight him after you beat the Pokemon League the first time. I think his Heart Gold Sil Silver team is my favorite and the one I would have him stick with. His Gold Silver Crystal team had Alakazam over Machamp, but like I mentioned earlier, I don't want the ace of one gym leader to be used by another. And Alakazam is Sabrina's ace. Also, yes, this does mean I have given Exeggutor to three Kanto gym leaders, Sabrina, Erica, and Blue. However, the idea is that these are the teams you would have if you fought them last and just fought this particular one last. So the other two, you would fight earlier, and then they wouldn't have Exeggutors. Now on to the Johto gym leaders, starting with Faulkner. His squad would be Pidgeot, Noctowl, Firo, Dodrio, Murkrow, and Zatu. Pidgeot is his obvious ace, and the others were selected because he used them, or its evolution, in the Johto leaders tournament in the Pokemon World Tournament. Plus, he also had Dodrio and Hoot Hoot in the anime. Bugsy would have Scizor, Beedrill, Butterfree, Heracross, Pinsir, and Shuckle. The first three are his regular gym battle Pokemon evolved up. Pinsir and Heracross were used in his Heart Gold Soul Silver rematch, and Shuckle was used a few times in the Pokemon World Tournament. I also considered giving him Fortress, but Shuckle has more type variety, because otherwise he'd have two Bug Steel types. Whitney, ugh, 
would have Miltank, Clefable, which is now a fairy type, but you would be battling her in a game where it's still a normal type, so it's still okay here. Blissey, Wigglytuff, Lickitung, and Girafferig. Miltank and Clefable are from her original gym teams, and the other four she used elsewhere at least once. She's also used more intimidating or angry looking normal types like Tauros or Ursaring, but I personally feel like her team should stick to the cute or pink aesthetic that her original teams had. But I specify cute or pink because Miltank and Lickitung are only the latter. Next up is Morty and Dear God, the first two generations did not have enough ghost types. Literally the only fully evolved ghost types in the first two generations are Gengar and Mistrevis. That is it. So for his team, things are gonna get a little goofy. First, I give him two Gengars and two Mistrevises. Miss Dravai? Anyways, two of each of them since there's precedent for that with Phoebe having two Dusclops and two Banette in Gen 3. For his final two Pokemon, I think he should have a Marowak since it's got ghostly ties and even has a ghost type regional variant, and then Weezing because he spends a lot of time in the burned tower. And coughing and wheezing are very common there, so it's likely he could have caught one at some point. Chuck would have Poliwrath, Primeape, Machamp, and all three hit mods. The first two are from his gym battle, and the latter four are the other ones he used alongside Primeape and Poliwrath in the Johto Leaders Tournament in the Pokemon World Tournament. Jasmine would have Steelix, two Magneton, Scizor, Fortress, and Skarmory. Steelix and her two Magneton are her leveled up gym team, and the other three are the only fully evolved Steel types in Kanto and Johto. The limited number of Steel types makes the two Magneton necessary. Price would have Piloswine, Dugong, Sneasel, Cloyster, Jinx, and Lapras. The first two are gym Pokemon, and the other four are ones he used in the Pokemon World Tournament. For Claire, yeah, there's uh, not enough dragon types. We're gonna have to do that thing that they did in the earlier generations and even sometimes later generations where they're just like, you know what, this Pokemon looks like a dragon, it's fine. Her team would be Kingdra, two Dragonites, Gyarados, Aerodactyl, and Charizard. This is basically her Heart Gold Soul Silver rematch team, but with her Dragonair fully evolved. On to Hoenn. Roxanne would have Nose Pass in Gen 3 or Probo Pass in Gen 6. Golem, Armaldo, Cradilly, Agron, and Relicanth. The first two come from her gym team, and the other four are from her team in the Hoenn Leaders Tournament in the Pokemon World Tournament. There are other rock type options in the Hoenn Regional decks, but since she's used these before, they work the best. Brawly would have Hariyama, Machamp, Metacham, Breloom, Heracross, and Blaziken. Hariyama, Machamp, and Metacham are evolved up gym Pokemon, and the other three are the only remaining fully evolved fighting types in the Hoenn Pokedex. Well, actually, Gallade is there in Gen 6, so for Gen 6 Brawly, swap out Blaziken with Gallade so he doesn't have to have a starter. Watson would have Manectric, Magneton, or Magnezone, depending on whether it's Gen 3 or Gen 6, Electrode, Raichu, Plusl, and Minun. The first three are, of course, gym Pokemon, and the other three he's seen having elsewhere. In fact, in Oris, a Plusle and Minon are shown living in his apartment. Flannery would have Torkoal, two Camerupt, Macargo, Ninetales, and Blaziken. The first four are gym Pokemon, including the duplicate Camerupt since she had a Numel and Camerupt in Emerald. While she's never had a Ninetales, it's in the Hoenn Regional decks, and Blaziken, while sadly a starter, is the only fully evolved fire type in the regional decks that's left. I don't like that I have to give Blaziken to both Flannery and Brawly, since it's a starter, but I'd rather give him a Blaziken than give him repeats, and Flannery already has one repeat. Norman's team would be Slacking, Spinda, Linoon, Exploud, Zangoose, and Kecleon. The first three are from his Emerald Gym team, and the other three are from his Pokemon World Tournament roster. Winona's team would be Altaria, Skarmory, Pelipper, Swellow, Tropius, and Crobat. The first five are from her gym teams, and Crobat is a Hoenn Regional Dex Pokemon I picked rather arbitrarily. Of all the fully evolved flying types in the Hoenn Regional Dex that were left as options, so there were Bug types, Salamence, Dodrio, and Crobat, I felt that Crobat fit her aesthetic the best. Well, there's also Gyarados, which she has used in the Pokemon World Tournament, but Gyarados, despite being a flying type, cannot fly. 
and honestly, should it have ever been a flying type? Tate and Liza would have Solrock, Lunatone, Claydol, Zatu, Chimeco, and Grumpig. The first four are from the gym teams, Claydol and Zatu from Emerald, and Chimeco and Grumpig were used by them in the Pokemon World Tournament. The two of them actually compete separately in the PWT, but they both use Grumpig and Chimeco in the Hoenn Leaders Tournament. One would have Kingdra, Love Disk, Whiskash, Walrein, Crawdont, and Gorbis. The first five are his team from Emerald with Basilio Evolved, and Gorbis he used in the Pokemon World Tournament. Next is Wallace who's in a weird situation because he's both a gym leader and a champion in the same generation. And while his final gym team could be his final gym team just made a bit stronger, I think it would make more sense for him to just use his champion team. Besides, he has used that team as a gym leader before in the post game of Oris. As a refresher, that team is Waylord, Tentacruel, Ludicolo, Whiskash, Gyarados, and Milotic. It's time for the Sinnoh region. Now, Sinnoh's in a bit of a weird situation because its regional decks increased in size within the generation when Platinum came out. For the sake of simplicity, when I'm picking these gym leaders teams, I'm allowing myself to pick from the Platinum decks not the more limited Diamond and Pearl decks. If I was limited to the Diamond and Pearl decks, you'd have problems like Flint, the fire type elite four member, only having two fire types. Rourke's team would be Rampardos, Onyx, Golem, Rhyperior, Probopass, and Pseudowoodo. The first three are from his gym, and the other three are the remaining fully evolved rock types in the Sinnoh decks. The only one of them he's never used at any point before is Rhyperior. Gardenia's team would be the same as her PWT Sinnoh Leaders Tournament team. Roserade, Cherim, Torterra, Carnivine, Leafeon, and Tangrowth. I normally wouldn't choose to give her Torterra since, as I've said, I don't like giving gym leaders starters. I'd give her something else in the Sinnoh decks like the Grass-type Wormadam or Tropius, but she's had Turtwig in all of her initial gym battles. So if it's already there, it's fair. Fantina would have Miss Magius, Driftblim, Gengar, Dusk Noir, Spiritomb, and Rotom. The first four are from gym battles, and Spiritomb and Rotom she's used in the PWT. I considered giving her Frostlass, but since that's Candace's ace in Platinum, I didn't think she should have it. Maylene would have Lucario, Machamp, Metacham, Toxicroak, Gallade, and Heracross. The first three are from her gym battles, Toxicroak and Gallade she's used in the PWT, and Heracross is the last non-starter fully evolved fighting type in the Sinnoh decks. She has used Infernape in the PWT before, but like I said, I'd prefer not to give him starters. Wake's team would be Floatzel, Gyarados, Quagsire, Luminion, Gastrodon, and Babarel. The first three are from his gym, Luminion and Gastrodon he used in the PWT, and Babarel, because I want to see a gym leader use a Babarel. The Sinnoh Dex has a ton of water type options, but Bibarel is the only Gen 4 fully evolved water type that is not a starter or a legendary. So to me, I think a Gen 4 leader should use a Gen 4 water type, and Bibarel's just goofy and I wanna see him use it. Byron's team would be Bassiodon, Steelix, Magnazone, Bronzong, Probopass, and Scizor. The first four are evolved up gym Pokemon, and the latter two are steel types in the Sinnoh decks that he's never used, but absolutely could. Candice's team would be Frostlass, Weavile, Mamoswine, Abomasnow, Glaceon, and Glalie. This is actually the exact team she uses in the PWT, comprising of all six fully evolved ice types in the Sinnoh decks. Volkner would have Electivire, Luxray, Jolteon, Raichu, Rotom, and Pachirisu. The first four are from gym teams, Rotomi uses in the PWT, and Pachirisu is a Gen 4 electric type. I could have given him Magnazone, but since Byron uses Magnazone and Pachirisu isn't used by any gym leaders, figured I'd spread the love and give him Pachirisu. On to generation five. And like with gen four, I will be using the most expanded decks possible. So in this case, the black two and white two Unova Pokedex. It's just more fun to have more options. Silent would have Simisage, Ferrothorn, Maractus, Whimsicott, Lilligant, and Tangrowth. The first three he uses in the Black 2 White 2 postgame, 
Whimsicott and Lilligant he uses in the PWT, and Tangrowth was picked since it's a grass type in the Black 2 White 2 decks. There are other options, but I wanted to save them for other gym leaders. Chili's team would be Simiseer, Heatmore, Darmanitan, Arcanine, Magmortar, and Camerupt. This is the team of six he uses in the Unova Leaders Tournament, so there's precedent for all of them, especially the first three, which he uses in the Black 2, White 2 postgame. Cress's team would be Simapore, Basculin, Golduck, Azumarill, Floatzel, and Octillery. The first two he uses in the Black 2, White 2 postgame, the next three he uses in the Pokemon World Tournament, and Octillery was chosen from the rest of the Unova decks for being a pure water type therefore having no way of overlapping with any other leaders. Aside from Marlin, but Marlin's fine. You'll see when I get to him that I was actually able to give both him and Cress completely unique teams. Lenora's team would be Watchog, Audino, Sawsbuck, Dunsparce, Clefable, and Slacking. Charon's team would be Stoutland, Sencino, Zangoose, Buffalot, Licky Licky, and Raticate. These two were a bit tricky since they have the same type specialty like with Cress and Marlin, but I wanted their teams to be wholly unique. So I gave them each their respective aces, Watchog for Lenora and Stoutland for Charon, then four Pokemon that they use in the PWT at some point, and then one last normal type that's in the Black 2 White 2 Unova decks that they've never used before, but they get to use now. Those being Raticate for Charon and Slacking for Lenora. Roxy would have Scolipede, Weezing, Muck, Garboder, Amoongus, and Crobat. The first three are from her gym battle, with Grimer only appearing in challenge mode, and the latter three being from teams she uses in the PWT. Berg would have Levani, Crustle, Escavalier, Excelgor, Durant, and Vespaquen. The first four are evolved up members of his challenge mode gym battle in Black 2 White 2, and the last two he uses in the PWT. Elisa would have Zebstrika, Emolga, Ampharos, Galvantula, Electros, and Stunfisk. The first four are from her Black 2 White 2 challenge mode gym battle, while the other two she adds onto those in the Pokemon World Tournament. Clay would have Excadrill, Crocodile, Seismitoad, Sandslash, Steelix, and Golurk. The first five are evolved up gym battle Pokemon from various games and modes, and Golurk is my favorite one of the Pokemon that he uses in the PWT. Besides Flygon, but that's going to drain it. Skyla would have Swanna, Unpheasant, Swoobat, Sigilyph, Braviary, and Mandibuzz. The first four are various gym Pokemon, and Braviary and Mandibuzz are from the PWT. Bryson would have Beartick, Vanillux, Cryogonal, Walrein, Weavile, and Dugong. The first three are from his gym battle in black and white, and the latter three are from the PWT. Drayden would have two Haxorus, Haxorai? Flygon, Drudigan, Altaria, and Hydreigon. The first four are from his various gym battles, and the last two he uses in the PWT. For Iris, like Wallace, we've already seen her use a full team of six. So therefore, if she was the final gym leader and had a full team of six, I would think it would be the same as her champion team. Marlin would have Jellicent, Caracosta, Waylord, Mantine, Alomomola, and Starmie. The first four are from his challenge mode gym battle, and the later two are ones he uses in the PWT. And that finishes Gen 5, which means we no longer can use the PWT as a reference for team members. Time to get a bit more creative. To start off Gen 6, Viola would have Vivian, Masquerain, Yanmega, Scolipede, Escavalier, and Mega Pinsir. I talked about in a previous video about how I think that the final gym leader in X and Y should have had a Mega Evolution because you had fought at least one Mega Evolution prior to that. So there are four with the Kalos gym leaders. If you were fighting them last, I think they should have a Mega. And so I'm giving all of them a Mega. Vivian and Masquerade she's used before, and the other four are picked from the Kalos decks based on pretty much my own preferences. Grant would have Tyrantrum, Aurorus, Barbarical, Gigalith, Agron, and Mega Aerodactyl. The first two are from a gym battle, and the latter four were picked by me. Mega Aerodactyl is the obvious Mega choice for him in my opinion, since it's another prehistoric Pokemon. Karina would have Halucha, Mianxiao, Machamp, Pangoro, Toxicroak, and Mega Lucario. She's used all but Pangoro and Toxicroak before. 
Toxicrocus chosen pretty arbitrarily, but Pangoro is a necessity since it's a Gen 6 Pokemon and she's a Gen 6 leader. Ramos would have Go-Goat, Victory Bell, Jumpluff, Trevenant, Gorgeist, and Mega Venusaur. The first three are from his gym, Trevenant and Gorgeist are Gen 6 Grass types, and Mega Venusaur is the only X and Y Mega available. There's only one other Grass type Mega Evolution, and that is Mega Obama Snow, and I am saving that for Wolfric. Clement would have Heliolisk, Magnezone, Emolga, Dedene, Lantern, and Mega Manectric. The first three are from the gym. Dedene is a Gen 6 Electric type. I like Lantern and Mega Manectric because in my fictional X and Y, Mega Ampharos is used by Drasna. Valerie would have Sylveon, Mr. Mime, Florgis, Slurpuff, Aromatisse, and Mega Mawile. The first two are from the gym battle. The next three are Gen 6 Fairies, and Mega Mawile is her Gym Mawile that can now go Mega. Olympia would have Female Meowstic, Sigilyph, Slowking, Male Meowstic, Malamar, and Mega Alakazam. The first three are from her gym. The next two are Gen 6 Psychic types. And yes, I do think that she should have both a female and a male Meowstic because while they're the same species, they look very different and have very different moves and they just, they just, they're just different. And Mega Alakazam was picked over Mega Metacham because she uses pretty much exclusively special attackers and Mega Metacham is a physical attacker. Wolfric would have Avalug, Cryogonal, Mamoswine, Bear Tick, Glaceon, and Mega Abana Snow. The first two are from his gym, the next three picked mostly arbitrarily from the Kalos Dex Ice types, and lastly is his Abama Snow, Mega Up. Now on to Generation 7, and as you probably know, there are no gym leaders. So instead, I'll be talking about the Island Kahunas, because they behave very similarly. Also, like with Gens 4 and Gens 5, I will be using the most expanded decks available, the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Alola decks. Hala would have Hariyama, Machamp, Beware, Polyrath, Crabominable, and Passimian. The first five are his Pokemon League team, then Passimian is added on since it's a Gen 7 fighting type. Olivia would have Midnight Lycanroc, Probopass, Gigalith, Armaldo, Cradilly, and Alolan Golem. This team is a combination of her League teams in Sun and Moon and in Ultra Sun and Moon. Nanu would have Sableye, Crocodile, Honchcrow, Absol, Alolan Persian, and Alolan Muck. This team is his post-game team from Sun and Moon with Alolan Muck added on. Hapu would have Alolan Dugtrio, Gastrodon, Crocodile, Flygon, Mudsdale, and Golurk. This team is a melding of her title defense teams in Sun and Moon and in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And now it's time for the current generation, Generation 8 Pokemon Sword and Shield. I will say up front that I will not be covering Bead or Marnie because while they end up being gym leaders, they are not gym leaders until after the main story is completed. So you have no possible way of fighting them as the final gym leader. In Sword, Milo would have Gigantamax, Flapple, Shiftree, Eldegoss, Belossum, Cherum, and Whimsicott. In Shield, the Flapple would be an Appleton, and Shiftree would be Ludicolo. The first five are from his Champions Cup rematch team, and then Whimsicott is added on to fit his cute round grass types aesthetic. Nessa would have Gigantamax, Dredna, Golisopod, Pelipper, Seeking, Toxapex, and Barrascuda. This team is a combination of her Champions Cups teams, both the first time and the rematches. Kabu would have Gigantamax, Senescorch, Torkoal, Ninetales, Arcanine, Salazzle, and Heatmore. The first five are from his Champions Cup rematch team, and Heatmore was selected from the Galar decks. B would have Gigantamax, Machamp, Phalanx, Grappalocked, Surfetched, Halucha, and Pangoro. This is a combination of her Champions Cup team and her initial gym battle team. Alistair would have Gigantamax, Gengar, Runarigus, Cursula, Poltegeist, Mimikyu, and Dusk Noir. This team takes Pokemon from both his initial gym battle and his battles in the Champions Cup. Opal would have Gigantamax, All Creamy, Mawile, Galarian Weezing, Togekiss, Rabombi, and Slurpuff. The first four are from her gym battle, and the last two are fairy types that Bead does not use. Gordy would use Gigantamax Colossal, Tyranitar, Stonejourner, Shuckle, Barbarical, and Pseudowoodo. The first five are from his Champions Cup rematch team, and Pseudowoodo was added onto that. Melanie would have Gigantamax Lapras, Galarian Darmanitan, 
Ice Q, Mr. Rhyme, Frostmoth, and Arctazolt. The first five are from her Champions Cup team, and Arctazolt was picked because it's one of the only two Gen 8 Ice types that she doesn't use. The other is Arctivish, but Arctazolt looks more icy. Then finally is Raihan, and for his gym battle team, it doesn't really matter whether they're dragon types or not. They just have to be mean, monster-looking Pokemon that are good in Sandstorm, because that is clearly the theme of his initial gym battle team. I would give him Gigantamax, Duraludon, Flygon, Gigalith, Sandaconda, Tyranitar, and Steelix. The first four are his original gym team, and the last two are, as I mentioned, mean slash monster looking Pokemon that do well in sand. So there we have it. That is a full team of six for every single gym leader in the main series games so far. Thank you guys so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.